Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, and welcome to our call for this week. And uh, it's myself and Laurel, and we are here uh, to take any questions that you might have. Um, we do. Uh, we did release uh, speed learning for experts, and um, uh, if you're an ultimate insider, I will be delivering that to you uh, as a bonus course uh, this month. So you will get access to that probably sometime tomorrow, maybe late tonight, uh, and also uh, it will be available to the public. I think it's already available. Um, I've yet to send out a launch announcement, but I will be sending one out after this call and uh, you can pick that up if you're watching this uh, whether by archive you can pick that up at the plrshow.com forward slash new and uh, that's where you'll be able to find it if you have any questions uh, please feel free to write them in the box and uh, we'll be happy to take uh, any questions that you might have and uh, uh, I will say that I think on uh, it's not the fifth, but the sixth, which is Wednesday. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do our best to get you access to uh, um, bullet journaling. Uh, Laurel's going to be releasing that uh, uh, on Wednesday, and uh, and then on Saturday um, we'll we'll have another another video course um, available. I haven't decided what that topic is going to be. I'll be deciding that tonight. Um, other than that, uh, you know, we, we try to keep you about 30 minutes unless there's uh, unless there's uh, a, a reason for us not to be to be on. Uh, but other than that, um, people are just kind of trickling in. If you want me to uh, unmute you, if you have a question I can answer, but please let me unmute you. I'll be happy to do that. And um, uh, other than that, um, I, I, I will say that. Uh, for this week in particular, um, we'll, we'll be a little scarce. Uh, we're going to be uh, at our at our doctoral residency and uh, just just kind of doing some work up there. But uh, 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 in addition to that, um, <laughs> uh, we have coming up um, uh, uh, bullet journaling and lead by serving. Uh, we talked a little bit about that last time, and uh, I did want to. Uh, just give Laurel the floor a little bit, um, I, and I asked her before we got on the call to uh, talk a little bit about the guy or the gentleman who was the uh, uh, kind of the, 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 the crux of that theory, which is Robert Greenleaf. I think he's got kind of an interesting uh, kind of story. And uh, um, you know, uh, so, so Laurel, uh, until every until folks have questions, and again. Uh, please feel free to write your questions in the box, and we'll be happy to take them. We'll interrupt what we're doing to unmute you, or you know, if you just want to write your question in, you can do that. Um, and uh, again, I talked to Laurel ahead of time and asked her to just kind of give a little insight on Robert Greenleaf, and uh, he is the uh, kind of the, the the center of the theory of servant leadership. If you even knew that, right? I mean, it's just so, such a common term; you might not have even known that. And uh, but he's got kind of an interesting story as to how you know the whole theory came up. So uh, Laurel, um, you want to just kind of briefly talk about Greenleaf, and then uh, we'll, we'll continue to open it up for questions. All right. With uh, I guess the story that that Charles is talking about is that um, Robert Greenleaf had spent some time <laughs> in in. Um, you know, it had a successful career and noticed that there was a kind of a void in leadership regarding morality. And this was even back in the, I think the 50s and 60s, he saw this. And so sometime around 1970, he's, he said, I can't put this off any longer. And he began to uh, write and talk about um, servant leadership and in this, he, he talked about the importance of leaders remaining not only true to their constituents or their followers, but continuing to be aware of them throughout their leadership journey. And it is it was important in Greenleaf's eyes that leaders begin their leadership capacity first as servants, as individuals who are serving people in some capacity 
with no leadership position. And then when they're in this place of, of servitude, that is from where they will transition into leadership. And even when they transitioned to leadership, it was really important to Greenleaf that individuals not uh, lose sight of the larger picture of continuing to be servant-minded towards their followers, towards their people, their, their tribe, whomever calls, calls them leader. And so um, in that, uh, he even went so far as to say that if someone has not been a servant first, he did not think that they were necessarily qualified to be a leader. And as such, their, their followers should not necessarily consider them leaders, again, until they had had that servant capacity in some way, shape, or form. And so it's in that that he began to talk about servant leadership in the, uh, the 1970 was the year he, he published The Servant as Leader in its first edition and then began to update it after that. Well, yeah, and so our, our upcoming uh, PLR will be on that. Um, I think it, it's either going to be late September or early uh, October. We haven't really decided yet. But uh, the next one coming from Laurel is going to be on bullet journaling. And it's kind of interesting because um, I read in Dan Kennedy's newsletter today, we were talking about just how you're going to be approaching, you know, building a membership where, you know, you've got to really have first a desire to really serve and help the people that are going to be subscribing to you. And that, you know, the very nature of an information marketer, right, and that's, that's exactly what Dan Kennedy was talking about is, you know, when people start, whether regardless of how your membership structured, whether or not you've got a little payment, whether or not you've got an annual payment, or even if you've got a one-time payment, your attitude has to be basically, you know, how can I really help these people accomplish what I think they want to accomplish and then making it your, your mission to try to find out what that is, right? And, 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 and I think, you know, it's just a really fitting uh, topic for all of us and even your customers who are going to be involved in, you know, information marketing, who really ultimately want, and I think everybody really does want this, even if they, um, even if they don't necessarily state it, your customers, they do want a recurring income. And so part of your, you know, your coaching, your job and all those things are going to be, you know, to bring that person, to bring those people into some kind of recurring, uh, recurring membership. And, they, and, and, and that's going to mean have a desire to serve, right? And 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 that's pretty much what it's going to be. Um, okay, so are any questions? Any questions? Okay, and it says, uh, let's see, Gail says it, it took a lot to get in. You have this new this new interface. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of it yet. Um, uh, let's see. No, there there should be a chat there, Gail. The the, the chat should be uh, there should be a chat someplace. Um, Right on the same panel, there are two there are two bubbles. There's a chat bubble and a question bubble. Although I can't see it from your side, but there should be two chat bubbles, both chat and uh, chat and question. So either way, uh, I should be able to see uh, your questions if you have it. Okay, yeah, and and Jim says that the chat button is at the top right in the uh, in your panel. Okay, uh, Gail saying she doesn't. You're, you're you're not seeing it yet. Yeah, you know what? This this new interface is going to take some getting used to. I wanted to switch back to the old one, but they won't let me. So uh, I guess they, you know, uh, they, they kind of tricked me, right? They said, you know, do you want to beta this? And I just said yes, and then they won't let me switch back. So, hmm. but uh, but but any questions? Any any questions? Anybody got anything that they are uh, launching or releasing? Um, or any questions about something that you're doing? Yeah, the bleeding edge. Exactly right. Uh, exactly, exactly right, Gail. Doing the best we can. Um, any questions? And you know, as always, I'm not going to hold you. Uh, you know, we just like to come on and and, uh, and and do this. And I'm really happy to have Laura with me uh, finally. And it's it's kind of my fault that she hasn't been on these calls. I've just not asked her. Um, you know, she's been willing, um, but, uh, you know, I'm rushing to get here typically at seven on Saturdays because it's our release day. But, um, you know, going forward, I'm going to make sure that she is, you know, she's on the, you know, she's on the call with me.
All right, so any questions? Okay, yeah, get, uh, well, Laurel, you can see that. So you can, Laurel, can you see the questions? And we can't hear you. You're muted, Laurel. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Jim said to talk a bit more about leadership. Is there, um, it's such a huge topic. Um, before I start rambling, Jim, is there anything in particular that, um, that you're hoping to, to, to gain from that? While you type that in, while you, while you type that in, we have been having uh, such a great opportunity to um, uh, learn about various aspects of leadership and um, the emphasis that we've been seeing maybe in the past, I'd say 10 to 15 years on really being uh, in tune with the follower. Uh, you know, books have, have been written now about followership, Even, and this was I guess it took some time for um, Greenleaf's concept of, of being cognizant of followers to really kind of catch on and, and gain a, a foothold in a following. So um, in that, we've been seeing, uh, like Barbara Kellerman wrote a book about followership. Uh, I think Charles is reading. So, um, all right, Jim says, leadership as it relates to online marketing and building an online marketing business. Um, what we can say at this preliminary point of examining what the literature has to say, Jim, is that leadership in the online environment is still really emerging and taking shape, particularly since the advent of COVID and, or, or you know, actually, you know, post-pandemic, we're all looking at what leadership looks like in an arena where people are picking and choosing who their leaders are and leaders are becoming such unlikely individuals who uh, quite frankly have no business in leadership capacities. So um, for those who are legitimate leaders, the, the, the challenge then becomes how to gain a footing such that you can gain a, a following and, and um, have people that are loyal to you and who are listen to what you have to say because what you have to say is legitimate. Um, would you add to that, Charles, or? or... Yeah, I mean, you know, that that's kind of, and, and it's kind of um, the journey I think that we've been on since, you know, we got started, you know, doing PLR again, um, you know, in 2020 is quite frankly, you know, really Ultimate Insiders is really, And it could be, you know, it could be that, uh, you know, I'm doing things. I don't know if I'm doing thing, anything on purpose to do this, but the people that tend to stay and the people that tend to, to, to hang around and become ultimate insiders tend to be, number one, people that we like. Number two, people that have just a real desire to help people. And when I say uh, teach people, I don't mean that you have to be like a good speaker, extemporaneous speaker. I like to speak contemporaneously, but what I have seen from people, I think of Jim, um, I think of, I think of, I think of Gail. I think she's got, she's got, she's got things out. You have a real desire to kind of see people grow in some way. And when you release, when I see people release products, at least the people who are ultimate insiders, I'm thinking also of, um, of Janine. You know, in the in the all if the of the in the offline space, these are people who have like a real desire to see people grow, and they and they structure things in that way. And so, you know, we don't really have any get rich quick copy on our pages. We're giving up sales that way. Um, but at the same time, though, and I think what's happened is that the right person ends up in our marketing funnel. I can't say I did that on purpose at the beginning, but now I do. And so. Um, the people that kind of end up being are, are people that have that 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 desire to serve people and will ultimately be leaders in whatever niche that they're going to be in and 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 so that's what i would just add to it that that's really without knowing it before we got in the doctoral program i have to say you know i wish i could say i did it all on purpose but we've kind of landed where 
the kind of person we end up working with ends up being the kind of person that wants to lead, that wants to uh, that that wants to help people to grow. Um, and yeah, yeah, no, I, it looks like uh, this go to webinar thing, man. I wish I could, I, I wish, I wish I could could change it. And Gail's saying it's harder for legit leaders in this age of populism. It's, we had this very same conversation with um, both of our daughters right before the call that this is a really crazy time we're living in that the kind of the 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 wave or the herd tends to say well i don't know what's right but i know you're wrong right that's kind of the spirit of things and so we all thrust ourselves into that this world where people don't necessarily know you know they, they don't necessarily want to acknowledge what's right but they'll say well i know you're wrong and i know they're wrong about it and so you know the best that you can do is you in your market in your niche i mean you you, you, you go telling the truth, right? Whatever that truth is, wherever it leads, um, you go speaking about accuracy. Um, you know, I don't promote a lot of software anymore. And it's again, I, I want to say this, not because the people, because the point isn't whether or not the people behind the software are not awesome people. It really is that there's only so much software that you have the attention to implement, right? Um, you know, I talk a lot about theory of constraints, and so one of the, the 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 key points about theory of constraints is focus. If you and I don't have focus, and we're diverting it with lots of technologies, lots of software, you never get around to doing the one thing you need to do, or the set of things you need to do to build a recurring income. And so it's and it's for that reason, I've really stopped doing a lot of software. It's really rare that I will promote software. And again, please, I'm not talking about anybody. You know, my colleagues, they do software, they promote it, and you're a grown up, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not your, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make decisions for you. Um, but part of, part of the way that we tell truth is by avoiding some things that we don't necessarily think that will help actually help you. Even if you want to go buy it, you want to go buy it from somebody else, that's fine. But I know, I know that you only have, you have a finite amount of attention. I don't care how much, so I don't care how much software you have. You only have this much attention you can pay to things. And if you don't take this little bit of attention and focus it on something, I guarantee you that 60, 60 day, you know, um, uh, what, 12 months from now, you'll be pretty close in the same place you are right now. Not because you're not a good person. Not even because you're lazy. It has nothing to do with it. People are not lazy, right? People in our space, in all internet marketers, they're not lazy. So all of that talk about, oh, you're lazy and you don't want to do anything, that's not, that's not us. The one thing I see is that people divert their attention. They buy stuff that kind of takes them down all these roads because they hope that maybe something will do all the work for them right and so i just kind of say all that parent that i said a lot parenthetically but really um kind of goes back to leadership in that that's that's the way that we kind of feel like we want to we want to lead and that's why we hope we hope you're going to lead in your your niche too is to in your own way be accurate right so we give you content that's going to be accurate uh you know Quite honestly, I know Laurel didn't do this, this like this leadership and bullet journal stuff. She didn't do it with, she didn't do it with AI. It's not because AI isn't awesome. It's because she knows the topic area, and and we don't know if the the stuff you're getting from AI is accurate. There's no, you don't know. You, it's it's sourcing stuff, right? And again, I know people don't care. It's not the point whether or not they care. It's that we don't know if it's how accurate or not, and so. You're either going to be a true, you, you, I know it'll sell. I know it'll sell. We, if we could crank it out really fast. If you can crank it out really fast, it'll sell. That's not the point. You know, the, the, the point is really in this marketplace, we have to find a way to kind of do it. Where we're really going to help people by being accurate and, and, and by telling the truth and by doing all those things. So 
I'm sorry for that's just a rant. And Laurel asked me to if I had to add something, and I add a lot. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. When you were talking about tools, I I thought uh, to myself, you're just talking about um, you know, buying all this stuff, um, hoping that something is the right answer and, and gets you from point A to point B. I was I thought about my own journey with um. <laughs> uh, journals and planners. And if I have one, I have, I don't know, 92 of them, hoping that there's one that will get me to the place of productivity and, and organization that I am, uh, that I'm aiming for. I, I just thought I'd throw that in. Um, it's now, there are a few questions here. Gail uh, mentioned something that I, I think was really important that I, uh, I you kind of touched on it. She was talking about, yeah, if you're doing get rich quick, you won't build a, a sustainable audience. And we have definitely seen that to be the, the, the case, Gail, that um, you can talk to people about these, you know, build it, build it out quick in, in 90 days, but, you know, it really is just like a flash in the pan because there's nothing sustainable about that. And uh, a business of providing leadership to your followers is something that's going to take time to build and to uh, establish yourself in. And you know, unfortunately, it just doesn't happen overnight. And, and we get it that you needed to pay bills. We, we really understand that. But um, in the short term, it does not pay, but it is definitely sustainable. And, and the significant scale of that comment is also the fact that um, talking about uh, leadership, you are the ones then providing true leadership with uh, you know, legitimate, information to the, the world you know to the world at large really um it's those voices that are saying something sustainable something legitimate that are going to to stick around for more than just a, a year or two you know you will be the the leaders in your industry and uh let's see some other questions were You know, we Jim, we cannot have we cannot have uh, AI write our dissertations, and that really was something that Charles and I have been talking about. That you know, some of our classmates are relying fairly heavily on AI tools, and the danger is that you know AI is just not ever going to be a replacement for the human brain. You know, again, talking going back to that topic of being a legitimate voice in your field. You'll never get there if you're relying heavily on AI. Now, is does AI provide great tools? Absolutely. You know, I do use AI, for example, when I'm looking for literature on a topic. But as far as what that literature says and how I process it in my writings, that is not something that AI, I don't think, is ever going to really be able to do. Uh, yeah, uh, Gail says it's a tool. It's not a brain, right? It does not replace that human process. And at some and point, the, I don't even, yeah, no, and I, I don't even know if we even know the result of it. So in other words, you know, um, and I wish I could find the study and I will go and I will find it. But there's there's evidence that use even of just something like a GPS, right, driving with with a, with a GPS has made our brain atrophy to a point where a person who decides not to use GPS when they just when they don't need it. So you know, some people use the GPS to go from one side of town to the other one. Maybe you use Waze because you're trying to figure out a way around traffic. But using it to go places where you know where to go, it causes your brain to atrophy. And so all of technology is not necessarily all good used all the time. And so it takes discretion. It takes learning how to be smart with it. It takes, you know, deciding that, yeah, like Gail is saying, it's a tool and, and it's it's not going to do everything for us. Now, again, I'm not naive. Uh, I released ChatGPT. I released MidJourney. Um, I, I did prompt engineering. And those are all very important products, right? Um, at no point do I do would I ever even communicate that's all that somebody needs. In fact, I will I will say this also too. Um, you know, look, um, my use of AI in in our in our doctoral program uh, has been different from Laurel's, um, and I've evolved in in the way that I kind of think about it because um, 
I know that I have to know what leadership is. So part, part of the, the whole PhD thing is I still have to know what I'm talking about. And all of this generation, right, if I, if I did nothing but generate, right, using, a, you know, chat GBT, whatever, if I do all of it generating, then there's nothing up in here that will tell me what leadership is. And so I have to be able to, at some point, I have to stand in front of people and they're going to ask me questions about leadership. And there's going to be a, a, a like a, a, a standard body of literature I have to be able to say, I know. I can't generate. So at some point, all of us, the only way we're going to be able to separate ourselves from anybody in the marketplace is going to be our level of expertise. Like we have to be, now is the time you, you and I have to pick something. We have to start to decide we're going to be like the expert is something. It doesn't matter what it is, but we do have to be like known for something. And I'm not saying you're going to know more than the AI, but you do have to be something where you know it, right? And that if the AI is wrong, you should be able to pick it out about something. Like if, if somebody, I think Jim asked me what I think my niche is, right? And so um, I know what problem I'm trying to solve, but like in the in the marketplace, I mean, I do on screen, I do on screen technical tutorials, right? That that's that's kind of what I do, in kind of a really specific market, in a really specific niche. And if if an AI said something, let's say about Zapier or about some platform, I'd know it was wrong. So I would know it was wrong. I could look at it and tell immediately if it was wrong. And I can look at it and tell that it's AI because of what I know about my specific area. And I think all of us are going to have to have some area. It doesn't have to be internet marketing, right? I mean, you know, we, we, you know we've got a, you know, our, 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 our daughter, she knows, she knows like, you know, composers. She knows, you know, African-American composers. Like she knows a lot about that, like right? almost down to the nth degree. And if, if she sees something, right, I'm pretty sure she'd be able to tell it was wrong right off the bat. And I think that regardless of what field we're in, you know, we sort of have to kind of pick something and you got to read everything in it so that when you see it, you say, nah, man, that, that's not that's not right. I don't care. I don't care what the AI says. I know it's wrong because I know it. And um, can I add something right there? Yeah, I know. Yeah, just to um, kind of touch on something that you said, and also to answer Helene's question, what other sources of leadership teachings are we using? Um, I mentioned earlier about using ChatGPT to help me find sources, and you also said, Charles, that um, you know we'll never know more than AI. I, I don't know. I, I think we might know more than AI if we're well well read on a topic because we know when AI is wrong. So, and all of the recommendations that chat GPT or whatever your AI tool of choice might be, when that tool is, is kicking out recommendations, you can say, hmm, that's not correct. And, uh, you know, chat GPT knows it can make up some sources. And I check each and every one of them because uh, they're not stuff. all legit. They're not all legit. And stuff. yeah, and so of the ones that are legit, again, you know, we're reading those to uh, have that comprehension ourselves of what the researchers are saying in that article or on that topic. So um, the sources of leadership teachings we're using, Helene, um, we are, we're walking that fine line between being practitioners and researchers and uh, researchers slash academics. And what we're finding is that there is this ongoing uh, dichotomy between the two, this, um, I won't say it's an adversarial relationship, but there's always the challenge when you are looking at a topic from an academic's perspective, how real, quite honestly, that information is, how, how it plays out in a practitioner's life. And in a practitioner, I, of course, has to be careful. Well, what is, what are we seeing in the bigger picture? Because you know, then your life becomes anecdotal. Well, this is what I experienced, so this must be the case. But it's important for practitioners to also have an understanding of what the research 
is bearing out on that topic as well. So we are looking, Helene, at um, a lot of different sources. Some are, you know, because we are in a doctoral program, we're looking at peer-reviewed research, but as practitioners, we are ever mindful of what practitioners, actual leaders in the field are, are doing, what they're talking about. Um, you know, we, we've got a, a couple of Maxwell books. He's not a, an academic, but he is a practitioner. Yeah, D D Dana said that they, they've got a covered bridge that gets taken out by a trucker every year or two. Um, following GPS, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's I mean, probably, and, and I, I, you know, you see these, you see these videos, right? And I, and, and it's, it's typically what it is, right? Somebody's following the GPS and, and the, they're looking at the clearance, right? The clearance, and they, they're processing it, but it, it, but it doesn't compute because, no, but the GPS says I can go this way. So they just go plowing through and, and taking out a bridge. No, it, it happens here too. <laughs> I remember uh, when the when the girls were a lot younger, we were on it was late at night. We were in some back uh, off off the main roads kind of area. We were in Canada trying to find some friends that live in Canada, <laughs> and the GPS, uh, you know, we turned a corner and the GPS said take the ferry, and it was like I don't know, middle of the night. There was no ferry, so here we are on the edge of a body of water, lost, <laughs> wondering. What on earth is going on? Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree, Helene. Yeah, um, uh, there, there's, um, I, I think that there's, there's going to be room for people who knows how, who know how to think outside of, of, of AI without fully trusting it. And it's funny because, um, we both read a book back in 2017. Um, you remember what to what to do when when machines do everything, and I I would I would encourage you to read that book right now. I'll, I'll try to find the um, I'll try to find the link to it, but um, but but essentially what it talked about even back then was number one AI is coming. I don't think they anticipated it was coming as fast as it did, right? Uh, like overnight with ChatGPT, but but that it was never going to take over everything, and that you have to kind of learn how to leverage it without just allowing it to do everything. So it's never going to do everything, right? There's always going to be room for that person who understands how to be a partner with it. And, you know, right now we're still in this kind of early stage. The dust is kind of flying and people think it's all new. And I think people still think it's going to do everything. And right now in our little individual space, you know, people still think, well, I'm going to buy a piece of software. It's all of a sudden it's going to start making me all this money, right? It's going to do it. And it's going to do it passively and it's going to do it forever, right? That That's that's what the sales page says. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to talk about anybody, but that's it, it, it's implied on the sales page that if you buy it, look at the screenshots. I'm using it right now and this is what it's generating me. And all you've got to do is put it in your business and it's going to start doing this for you. And here's the thing. What's implied is that it's going to do that forever. And one of the things that Gail talked about was, is it sustainable? It may not be. And so some of the stuff is, you know, it's like every other strategy other than building an audience, right? It, at, at the end of the day, this is a personal business that we're in. We are information marketers. The brand is you. You are the brand. And it's, 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 do people trust you? And at some point, um, it becomes, it becomes the, 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 the bond you build with your customers, with your subscribers, um, with, with the people that, you know, who, who are buying from you and, and whatever that relationship is, right. That's, that will ultimately be the thing. The software can never do it all for us. I don't think. And, you know, maybe maybe two years from now, I'll think differently. I'll see somebody else. I'll see lots of people doing it. But right now, it's the same as it was back in, um, you know, olden times. And this is what, you know, I read Dan Kennedy. He's saying all the same things, which is it's the bond that you and I build with our customers. And so, you know, we're still going to have to be available and trying to help people to accomplish 
whatever your niche is, I mean, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a couple of different people in lots of different niches. Like you all are doing lots of different kinds of things, right? Not everybody's doing internet marketing in the way I do it. It's still coming back down to the way you help people, right? And, and, the, and the relationship you're building. So, um, well, guys, it's, uh, it's 735, I think it is. And, uh, you know, we, we try to try to get you out of here in 30 minutes. Um, any other questions? I think we, we've kind of, we just kind of chatted today. Uh, we, we didn't really talk about internet marketing that much, but, um, but this is cool. I, I, I appreciate y'all being here and just being able to shoot the breeze. Any other, any other questions or any questions that we miss? Jim said that, uh, a good AI analogy is, uh, Google Translate. If you know Spanish, then you you know a lot of their translations are not correct. Yeah, I, I think that's that is definitely the case. You know, AI, all these tools, they can only go by their meta services. You know, so they're looking at what the sum total of things you know is being said about any particular topic, and we know that some of those voices feeding into the topic are just not legitimate. They're not saying things that are true, things that are, you know, actually the case. So AI picks up on all of those voices, the good and the bad. Well, everybody, uh, again, uh, thank you for uh, hanging out, uh, hanging out with us here. We appreciate y'all being out here. Um, uh, God willing, we will be with you next Saturday. We might be a little later. I think we're getting back from Philadelphia that day, so it might be a little later. Um, you know, if we if we have to cancel, it'll only be because um, you know travel day is just a crazy day, and they've got all the kinds of stuff going on. So sometimes we get back late on Saturday, but um, we will be with you. Um, you know, if not next sa if not this next Saturday, it'll be the following Saturday. And uh, other than that. Um, uh, good, good to see y'all. And uh, as always, please let us know if y'all have anything going on. If you're an ultimate insider, um, you know, always, always, always let us know what's going on if you've got launches and other stuff that you're doing. Okay, so thanks very much, everybody. Have a great night and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.